and the world rejoices as Canon announces a new camera that costs $30,000. Well, welcome to the new world. The new world of Canon, where everything is insanely expensive and tailored for the very, very, very high end. Now, that's not to say I hate this camera. If you don't know about the camera, Canon announced the ME20FSH. I guess that's how you say it. I don't know. Sounds like a really random product code. I really wish these camera companies would get some names or combinations of letters and numbers that were a little easier to remember. But for right now, we have the ME20FSH. And the claim to fame of this camera is that it shoots at 4 million ISO or 4 million ISO, however you like to say it. I don't really care. I go back and forth. ISO, ISO, 4 million ISO on this thing. And that sounds really cool. Uh, most most cameras don't shoot nearly that high. And Canon was able to achieve this through basically taking a full frame size sensor, which this camera features. But instead of having a really high megapixel count, they actually went for a really low megapixel count. So this isn't for photography. It's primarily aimed actually at video, which is interesting. And it's got a two megapixel sensor, which is essentially 1080, 1920 by 1080, two megapixels. And what this allows them to do is make the photosites, the pixels on the sensor that are actually capturing the light, they're able to make them really, really big. Sony attempted a similar tactic with the A7S, and by attempted, I mean they succeeded. The A7S is Sony's kind of DSLR type mirrorless camera that shoots really well in low light. And on the Sony A7S, the photosites are, I believe, 8 microns, and on this new Canon ME20FSH, they're 19, so a little over double the size on the photo site. So since the A7S does really well in low light, I'd imagine this thing is even better. It's got twice the size of these pixels on the sensor. So that's really good news. But when you put it into context, okay, we're talking about 4 million ISO. Like, What does that even mean? It's essentially three, three and a half stops better than what the A7S can do. The A7S maxes out around 400,000. ISO. And every time you double your ISO, you increase your exposure by one stop, very similar to uh, changing your aperture by one stop. So going from like F4 to F28 or F28 to F2, you're, you're doubling your exposure. So this is only about three and a half stops better than the A7S, which is already really good. I've done a couple videos featuring the A7S showing kind of its its abilities. There are a bunch of videos on the internet that you can kind of see how well the A7S does. So I have no doubt that this Canon will be that good or better. It's just how much better is it going to be? Three stops, that is quite a bit. You know, three times, it's not even three times, it's uh, doubling the light, doubling the light again, and then doubling the light again. So you are seeing, you're going to be able to see deeper into those shadows but at, at what point does it become kind of like not useless but it's very specific in application and thirty thousand dollars this certainly isn't a camera that's meant for me or probably you this is for scientific application very specific documentary filmmaking or specialty uh, commercials or if, very niche fields. This is probably a camera that most people are going to rent. I can't imagine a lot of people buying it unless you know exactly like, oh man, I'm so glad they invented a full frame night vision camera. If that's what you were hoping for, well, Canon made it. So open up your wallet and send them 30 grand because this thing is supposedly coming out in December. And it certainly doesn't have me excited. And I was kind of playing around at the beginning of the video, just kind of joking around, giving Canon a hard time. It, this is kind of cool for what it is. You know, you can't record internally on this thing, and it's only 1080 with a two megapixel sensor. So, like I said, very specific application. If you need absolute low light, like the best low light, this will probably get you there. But you could probably get away with the A7S. I mean, we what we shot, we were bouncing an iPhone uh, torch light off the ceiling, and we were able to, to see uh, pretty incredibly at the high ISOs on the A7S. And even that is ridiculous that anyone would even shoot with that limited light. So very specific application. If you're a regular kind of photography or video person who uses even the most basic lowest watt light bulbs, you're still getting plenty of light for these cameras, especially at those high ISOs. So 
I, I don't know how to feel about this. A lot of people are kind of getting all excited about because it's four million. Whoa! Oh my gosh! It's that's such a big number. And all right, cool. I guess thirty thousand is also a pretty big number. And I can imagine you could spend it on on better things. So I, I don't think it's a, any fault of Canon for making this camera. It, I'm sure it will do exactly what it needs to do for the people who it's targeted for. But at the same time, this technology or similar technology in terms of the low light shooting has already come around with Sony's A7S. And, you know, that's kind of just the first, the A7S is just the first of its kind. And I'm sure there'll be an A7S Mark II and perhaps Panasonic will do a low light camera. Nikon could focus more on low light. Canon could make a DSLR that's aimed more at low light. They've already got their high megapixel one out there now, the 5DS. So I imagine this will only become more and more popular, just like we're seeing a lot of cameras uh, shooting at higher and higher frame rates. You're probably also going to see a lot more cameras focusing on low light uh, rather than high megapixel counts or what have you, especially for video where, you know, resolution, even 4K, uh, I shoot most of my stuff at 4K, but ultimately me and many other people were scaling down to 1080 because that's what most people are watching in anyway. So to to start talking about 6K and 8K and 10K, I think these camera companies are smart enough to realize that that's not the marketing strategy they should go with right now, at least not right now, you know, so they'll focus on, you know, frame rates and ISOs and whatnot. So I don't know, the ME 20F SH could be cool to rent, but certainly nothing that I'm going to pay too much attention to, at least right now, because there are no projects on my radar where I would need anything like that currently. But hey, you never know. Maybe one day I'll need to rent one and get a play around with it. But I don't know, 30000 Yeah, it's probably right for, I guess, for Canon pricing. That sounds about right.